Hi, I'm Adam Simon, Managing Director for Actors Theatre of Columbus. Thanks for tuning in for tonight's Shakespeare Underground and Volume 3 of William Shakespeare's Shorts. The Shakespeare Underground is supported by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, the Ohio Arts Council, the Rheinberger Foundation, the Columbus Foundation, with special support from HER Vutec Rough Realty and Regina Acosta Tobin of Metro Village Realty. Enjoy the show. Hey guys, this is going to be a little bit of a different video this week because I just have I have something I need to say. This has been a really hard week for me. I think, you know, I think I'm a pretty generous person. I've been sending my togas to so many people. I've been Venmoing anyone who asked, but when I need help, no one wants to help me at all. You've been watching my Instagram stories. I see you. I see those views and no one has commented or anything at all. You know what? I just have one thing to say to all you haters. F you. Flavius is my only friend. F you. I hate it here. I'm out. I'm gonna go live in a cave. Remember to like and subscribe. Vouchsafe to those that have not read the story that I may prompt them, and if such as have, I humbly pray them to admit the excuse of time, of numbers, and due course of things which cannot in their huge and proper life be here presented. Now we bear the king towards Calais. Grant him there. There seen peace to this meeting, and wherefore we are met unto Henry's England, and now Henry's France and health and fair time of day to our most fair and lovely joy, the French Princess Catherine, and the King's greatest motive being that which does lay on his heart, to win the art and eye of her that does keep France safely sheltered in her arms. Now we watch, and the scene do display to unfold, unwind, and unite the day. Fair Catherine, and most fair, will you vouchsafe to teach a soldier terms such as will enter at a lady's ear and plead his love suit to her gentle heart? Your Majesty will mock at me. I cannot speak your England. Oh, fair Catherine, if you will love me soundly with your French heart, I will be glad to hear you confess it brokenly with your English tongue. Do you like me, Kate? Pardonnez-moi. I cannot tell what is like me. An angel is like you, Kate, and you are like an angel. Could it be? Could you see semblable à des anges? I said so, dear Catherine, and I must not blush to affirm it. Oh, mon Dieu! Les langues des hommes sont pleines de tambourins. <laughs> what say you, fair one? That the tongues of men are full of deceits? The princess is the better English woman. In faith, Kate, my wooing is fit for thy understanding. I am glad thou canst speak no better English, for if thou couldst, thou wouldst find me such a plain king that thou wouldst think I had sold my farm to buy my crown. I wear out my suit. I speak to thee, plain soldier. If thou canst love me for this, take me. Yet I love thee too. I know no ways to mince it in love, but directly to say I love you. If thou would have such a one, take me, and take me, take a soldier, take a soldier, take a king. 
And what sayest thou then to my love? Speak, my fair, and fairly I pray. C'est possible that I should love the enemy of France? No, no, it is not possible you should love the enemy of France, Kate, but in loving me, you should love the friend of France. And Kate, when France is mine and I am yours, then yours is France and you are mine. I cannot tell. Can any of your neighbors tell, Kate? I'll ask them. I do not know that. No, tis hereafter to know, but now to promise. How answer you? Le plus bella Catherine de Monde Montres Cher et Devin Dice? <laughs> Your Majesty, I found it French enough to deceive the most sage demoiselle that is in France. <laughs> <laughs> now fie upon my false French. By mine honor and true English, I love thee, Kate. By which honor I dare not swear thou lovest me. Come, your answer in broken music, for thy voice is music, and thy English broken. Therefore, Queen of all, Catherine, break thy mind to me in broken English. Oui, mon roi Upon that, I kiss your hand, and I call you my queen. La c'est, monseigneur. Then I will kiss your lips, Kate. Les dames, mademoiselles, pour être baisées devant les noces, il n'est pas la coutume de France. Mademoiselle, what say you? It is not the fashion for ladies in France. Ah, I cannot tell what is baiser in England. Kiss. Oui. It is not fashion for the maids in France to kiss before they are married? Oui, vraiment. Oh, Kate. Nice customs curtsy to great kings. Dear Kate, you and I cannot be confined within the weak list of a country's fashion. We are the makers of manners, Kate. There is more eloquence in a sugar touch of your lips than in the tongues of the French Council, and they should sooner persuade Harry of England than a general petition of monarchs. Shall Kate be my wife? So please you. But does it please you, dear Kate? Wait, <laughs> I am pleased and contented to be queen. And in France and England, let me say, I love you. Now welcome, Kate, and bear me my witness, God, that here I take you as my sovereign queen.
Hi. Hi, Peter. How are you? Hi, hi, Bottom. How are you? I'm great. Really excited for this. Mm-hmm. Yep, ready to go. Yeah. It's great. Hey, Snug. Okay. That's not good. Okay. Uh, it's not good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Whew. It's great. All right. Um, just just a few more, it seems like we're waiting on. So I guess we'll just wait for them. Oh, there's, hey, there's Flute and Starling. Hey, guys. All right. Hi. Hi. Cool, cool. So just, just, just now, of course. <clears throat> Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Is all our company here? Yes. And here is a marvelous, convenient place for our rehearsal. First, good Peter Quince. Say what the play treats. Mary, our play is the most... Whoever's making that noise, please mute yourself. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> now, our play is... The most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work. Now, Peter Quince, call forth the actors out by your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, answer as I answer as call, as you. I call <clears throat> Nick Bottom. Nick Bottom. Ready? Name what part I am for. Uh, you are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? Uh, a lover? Hmm? Mm hmm? Or a tyrant. <sighs> a lover that kills himself most gallant for love. Oh, well, that will last for some tears in the true performing of it. Yet, um, my chief humor is for a tyrant. Through this flute? Flute? Your, flute, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. Here. Now, Flute, you must take Thisbe, the lady that Pyramus must love. He says, let me not play a woman. Uh, let me play Thisbe, too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe. No. Uh, Robin Starveling? Here. You must play Thisbe's mother. <laughs> Tom Snout? Here. Here. Uh, you, Pyramus's father, or myself, Thisbe's father. Uh, Snug the joiner. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you, the lion's part. All right, but like... It is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion too. <laughs> you, you should do it too terrifyingly. Oh, I will, I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking duck. You can play no part but Pyramus. Oh, well, I will undertake it. Masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, desire you to learn them by tomorrow night and meet me in this place. I'll email you the link. I'll look for it. This all could have been an email. All right. Thank you. Snug. Uh, I don't have it yet. Have you sent it yet? No, no, nope, I haven't. Checking. Goodbye. Bye, Bottom. Bye.